Welcome well, everything you're doing. I know. <laughs> All right. Good Check evening. Out here. Welcome everyone to the Thursday, June second, twenty twenty-two uh, planning board meeting. I'd like everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Introduction to board members. To the far left, we have Paul Amatucci and Dave Andreessen, myself, Michael LaRue. We have Phil Roy and alternate member Matt Henry. Um, Matt, you're going to be a voting member today. Um, okay, next is the first public comment. Oh, sorry, sorry. Forgot Tammy. The town planner and Jen McCabe, the code enforcement officer. Did also, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that's all right. And now um, back to the first public comment. Okay, seeing no one coming forward, no public hearings. Approval of minutes for May 19, 2022. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the May 19th, 2022 meeting. I will second. Okay, further discussion. All in favor? Abstain. Okay. All right. So that was four yeses and one abstain? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Old business. Second Amendment to Richard DeMaris. Approved subdivision by Les Bodwell, a.k.a. Navina Acres, LLC. Tax map R44, lot 21-5. Main DEP permits and signed site plan. And the site plan is right over there. You need to sign all of the pages. There are three copies with three pages each for each section. So you do need to make a motion for that. And do you want to do the main DEP information first? Yes, let's do that first and then sign it. Jay is here representing Navina Acres if you want to ask any questions of him. Might be easier if you go to the podium, just in case. Uh, for a question. Oh, <laughs> I can go to the podium. It, it, is this for the stormwater walk we did last meeting? This is for the walk or no? This is for Les's uh, Half Winger Lane. Yeah, this, this is, is for Half Winger Lane. Yeah. Double G Apartments. No, okay, this no. is okay. The, this is the other one. Yeah, too many irons in the fire. This is this is the, <laughs> yeah, this is the extension. Of, uh, double this G Apartments. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my name's, I guess for the record and viewers, my name's Jay Stevens. I'm with Civil Consultants, and I am representing Les tonight at this meeting for the signing of the plans. <clears throat> the DEP approval came through uh, a couple weeks ago, or last within the last two weeks, um, and I got a copy to Tammy so that she's got the multi-page approvals and so forth. Um, one of the things that she had commented on was the DEP fees. And one of the things we found out, because we haven't had a project of this magnitude in quite a while, is that the Army Corps and the DEP work together on coming up with a fee. The DEP comes up with a fee. The Army Corps comes up with a fee. Whosever fee is bigger is the fee that we have to pay. The Army Corps won this time a little over $92,000. Um, that fee has been submitted, and we, again, sent a copy of the check and the return receipt, sending it to, I guess it goes to Augusta somewhere. I don't know what they do with it. It goes to an in lieu of fund of some kind. Yeah, and so. he did provide the proof. The DEP approval did not change any of the information that was on the plan set that you had. Um, all of the buffers remain the same. Um, they will all be marked in the field before less goes out there to be sure they remain undisturbed. Uh, we were just waiting for the DEP agreement that that's what the buffers would ultimately be before we went out, put up the placards, and dashed them to the trees. Um, so that will be probably the next step is those placards will be uh, mounted. Bless you. Thank you. But if anybody has any questions. Bless you. Oh, sorry. So what are we voting on tonight? 
just signing the signing the plans. Okay. Yeah. But I I do have I wrote based on um, the main DP department order that came back under number two stormwater standards. It does say in A section one that this plan and plan sheets containing erosion control details were reviewed by and revised in response to the comments of the Bureau of Land Resources. If they did make comments on the revision, we do need a copy of that for the file. No, these no. were the revised plans. Okay, those were? Yeah, the revisions, what they were originally asking for, came through before our last submission. Okay. And we've just been waiting this long for them to agree that those changes were acceptable. So no, nothing changed from the plan set that you have. Okay. Super. Um, the logs for the inspections, especially during construction, the pre and post inspections that you have to do, once a storm happens, can you just shoot them over, have them shoot a copy? He can scan them and just send them over to me. They don't have to be any formal letter or anything with it because it did say that because it's a mitigation process that they're trying to go through, I want to be able to support that, yes, you did what you needed to do should anything come up from it. I will note that this should get copies of those to you when he does those, when he performs those yeah. checks. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and I did provide to Jay a copy of my planner memo that was done. So it does make other comments about recorded copies to the town for like the deed restrictions and things like that so hopefully when he does them and if he doesn't assign it to a lot it's a general deed restriction that those will still come over once he sells a piece of property the deed will come over anyways to the assessor and it usually goes into the parcel file but I really want to try and keep everything together for the subdivision so they should they decide to want to do added ones change them something different we have everything all together and it's not okay where do we need to find this so and then um yeah i just wanted to confirm that we got the the in lieu fee so mr chair i have a question yeah uh just trying to wrap my head around the verbiage on the on the last page uh where it is signed by the commissioner it says it does not Verify compliance with any applicable shoreland zoning ordinance. Is that? It's because they're not in the shoreland. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they might have wetlands, but it's not considered a shoreland because it doesn't no connect to the Salmon Falls or dump into the ocean. Then it's too mm -hmm. far away too for far. it to be even. Mm -hmm. Roger that. Got it. Considered for that. All right. So we're looking for a motion for completeness. Is that what we're nope. signing the plans? Sign signing the plans. plans. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah, make that motion. To sign the plan. Find it complete or no, to, sign to sign it. Oh, to sign it. Do we need a motion? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, we find it complete and make a motion to sign the plans. Okay. I will second yep. the motion to sign the plans. Yep. All right. That, that's, that's a new one <laughs> for me. <laughs> <but> <laughs> All right, further discussion? All in favor? All right. Okay. Lots of signing. And then today's date? Please. to sign like nine times yeah I have another pen over here too if anybody needs to. oh okay yep right here. There's 
re the reason there's so many plans is because there's the subdivision plan and then there's all of the two different sets of buffer plans which are essentially little surveys so they can be referenced now easily in the deeds too fast for me. <laughs> I don't think it matters. Well, is he? Uh, so at that point, he wasn't a member at, for the voting of the completeness of this. So now, okay. let's, let's okay. keep it. Yep. You'll get the next one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's got another one coming through. So <laughs> last those. Yeah. Yeah. talking about me over there? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I, You know me, I would just tell you. You're right, you would. Yeah, but no. <laughs> we'll tell you after. It's funny. Take one or two with you this time. I, I thought you wanted to keep two, so I'm well, I did that. But yeah, I'm only going to take one. Okay. Take every tomorrow. Yeah. Someone will take two for it up, or maybe Monday. Monday. <laughs> I was going to say that's fast. Great tomorrow. service. <laughs> Mike's got a bank if you want to check for the, a complete set. I think he's putting it together as he's... Oh, as he's doing it. Yeah, ah. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> this one, it's three pages, right? Yeah. yeah this one's on awesome. so you want to take that. I have your rubber band if you want it. Thank you. Might be nice. <laughs> okay. They only take the paper ones now. They wrinkle a little more than the old mylar did. Yes. Yeah, but the mylar gets so brittle. Yeah. Oh, No, I'll, I'll have them leave them on the desk so they stay flat. <laughs> oh, so you get to keep the flat ones, huh? <laughs> that way I'll roll them up at the end of the meeting. All right, so that's that. Now to new business. Aspen Power Partners, Main 1 Sophie's Way, LLC, Tax Map, R67, Lot 1-2, request, request for construction, extension, and surety bond. Hey everyone, Tiffany Chase, Aspen, Power Partners. 
we're requesting a 12 month extension to the 50% uh, completed construction by August 5th. Um, procuring the mechanical equipment with the supply chain issues is taking longer than we originally anticipated for not just us, but most people. Um, so we're requesting the uh, 12 month extension. And then also um, we obtain the decommissioning plan bond in the name of the town. The abutters on that dirt road, if they're going to be doing construction during the wet season, doing the extension. Is that a condition that we can do? Mm, I don't think so. I think this no. is just because they've already got approved. This is just an extension. They so have, okay. They've already yeah. they already have their conditions. And okay. Was we did put conditions in for road maintenance on that one, correct? I don't know. Okay. I'd have I, to look it up specifically. <laughs> um, the condition was that we have to return it to the condition it was prior to when we okay. started construction. Right. Yeah. And they did provide there's two, pictures. There's two abutters on that road, if I'm not mistaken. There is. Just, yeah. Okay. Yep, I just want right. to make sure we're not tearing their road up. I was on it today. It still looked pretty good. Okay. Um, good. And then that road will be prepped um, at the next stage of construction. Right now they were just working on tree removal because we had to get that done before they... Um, June 1st was they shut it down for the bats. We can't do until, um, for June and July, we couldn't cut trees. So we just got the trees cut um, so we could meet that deadline. All right, excellent. So what they're looking for is similar to the other one you did with the extension of 12 months. What in, if the board agrees by motion, I'll then type up the letter, just like we sent to the other company, and I'll do it exactly the same way, except change the names and the dates. Mike will come in, sign and attest it, sign the letter. I'll get it out to them because they do have to record it. And then it has to be attested because it's crossing state lines. So that way it makes it extremely official that way. Then I would like to make a motion that we have a good night. grant the 12 month extension. A little second, said motion. Thank you, Jay. Good. Further discussion? It just, and you're saying that the, the actual reason for this is supply chain issues yes yes all right yep. okay that's it okay all in favor okay yeah phil was did you second or did i did that? you did okay <coughs> so tiffany i'll do the letter up i'll have mike come in i'll attest it and everything and then send you a hard copy i'll also scan it and send you an email with it that sounds perfect. so that way it's easier to get recorded that awesome. way. <laughs> thank you everybody I appreciate thank it. you thank you all right so moving on uh, planning board <laughs> review letter for community development block grant 2022 community enterprise assistance grant would you like me to go to the podium on this you could just say it right there okay. that's fine <laughs> I think she'd rather go to the podium. Okay. No, I Jenny wants to go to the podium. <laughs> this way I can test out the everything else and make sure they can hear me better. Um, <laughs> JCS 16 LLC that's doing all the construction and did the first set of buildings over on the edge was able to get a grant for $75,000 for the facade, the front facade, so the Sullivan Street side of the building will be assisted with helping them to get a portion of that cost. They're running into supply chain issues, as are a lot of people. So we had to do a quick submission for the grant so they could still get the approval back in time to be able to place the order and hopefully have it before August when they hope to open up in the new building. So this grant, as part of their phase two processing, has to have a letter from the planning board stating they are in compliance with the comp plan and the site plan review and the other ordinances that you approved them for with their site plan review and conditional use. So when I went through it, I also provided you with a copy of the application <coughs> so that you could take and see exactly what they wanted to do. And in all honesty, they've done the majority of the legwork on this grant. I'm here doing what they can't do. So they're really working hard to make sure this grant happens for them. 
it will help everybody around it will keep everything on schedule we're hoping and the state thinks it's a great idea so the state is the one that does the community grants uh, there will be a public hearing with the Board of Selectmen on the 15th regarding this grant so that if anybody from the community has any questions on it they can come in at that point and ask the questions but it's we need to notify people that they were awarded it so and then this is our portion as part of the planning board to take and approve that yes they are in compliance with the planning board's rules and regs any questions we've already approved <coughs> everything having to do with that building in the edge right so and so basically what they said when you approved it is the facade they're looking to get perfect so Great. so there's no su substantive changges to not the yet. look, color shape nope okay nope. we don't we don't project there will be okay no yeah. not much. she's keeping it basic white so that way you know if we go the olive green or something there might be a little <laughs> delay in getting it but she's going to keep it the white and then use accent colors with it to make it look really sharp and impressive nice. so so to keep mike out of hot water because he has to sign this if somebody wouldn't mind making a motion that way it covers him signing this document can i just to make sure I understand fully, it was a state mm -hmm. grant that was granted for the frontal facade of the building, oh, and no. they need our approval to move forward with that. Correct. Okay. I will make a motion to approve. I'll second I'll, that. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Motion to sign. Cool. Thank you, gentlemen. Sounds like Mike's going to be busy. <laughs> yes. The what? I said you're going to be busy signing. <laughs> I just signed it. Perfect. Yeah. It's done. <laughs> no, that's not the official Oh. <laughs> that's only Sorry, if it's I'll got be back, staple I'll be back marks. Monday or Tuesday to sign for the okay. rest um, of stuff. So. Um, the next is the second public comment. No one's on. Um, Zoom. No, you don't have a, a. Oh, yes, we do. Sorry. I'm looking at the wrong paper. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we have more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to close that public comment. Next is informational items. First one is House of Hope Recreational Center, 25 Sawmill Hill, tax map U1, lot 14, findings of fact, update document. As part of their approval, you had requested that they get a letter stating that they will not put any structures between the new building and the old building. I believe it's the pantry that it's going up next to. So the treasurer for the House of Hope signed a letter stating that they will not put any structures in that area. If they opt to, they have to come back to get the town consent on it. So this way we keep the, the fire chief, his request are upheld that way and the reason it's under informational items is because you don't really have to do anything with it it's just so that it's at the meeting people know it came in and it can be added to their packet great awesome thank you all right moving on we have the preserve at rolling meadows tax map r45 lot 39 providential equity development llc mike sudak atar engineering llc complete traffic impact study and mike is on zoom evening mike evening everybody good evening so um i can i can take the lead here tammy um, thank you on this one's <laughs> no problem sorry i can't see you um so yeah um this application we're kind of in the the just a quick recap we're kind of in the nebulous space between preliminary approval and final uh, application submittal. Um, all that I'm here for tonight is, if you remember the last meeting I was before you guys, uh, to talk about the traffic impact analysis that was completed for this project. Uh, somehow you guys wound up with every other page, um, so we couldn't discuss it as uh, substantially as maybe uh, some of the planning board members wanted to. So. 
now that that's in your hand, I'd be happy to uh, take any questions you have on it. Um, yeah, that's really all I've, I've got to say. I can entertain anything you guys have got. Does anybody have any questions? And I did compare, I know this is going to sound silly, but I did compare the recommendations page from the previous one to this one. And they're the same ones. So. Yeah. Yep. No, I don't see any reason to. No. Okay. No other questions? No. All right. Mm, Thanks, that. Mike. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I'll uh, see you for final. All right. Have a good night. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. So next is handouts for upcoming planning board application reviews. Yes. You will find in your paperclip packet four applications. The first one is for a subdivision that did not get recorded. So they're coming back to the planning board requesting that the planning board reapprove it so they can then get it recorded. They just, it was the start of the pandemic. If you read the cover letter with it, it's a great explanation. I went back, I checked all the documents. I felt like I needed to get a little microscope to make sure everything remained the same. They put a new signature block on it for the planning board. So the findings of fact is still in here. So I will take and write a planner memo for the next meeting and you'll have it before then so yep. you'll know whether or not we have to have the public hearing or not but with the applicants not being here tonight we really can't, can't I'm not done. gonna right say much about it right so it, it will be a little unique in the fact that it happened at the very beginning of the pandemic when everything became shut down so I did double check dates on it to make sure that the information was correct so I could, we could blame this on the old town planner. <laughs> <laughs> Currently no. the town manager. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, in all honesty, I don't remember how I handled the first part of the pandemic. How we got everything done yeah, that we needed to get done in the yeah. prior town. It was right. like, really? What did we do? How did yeah. we do that? Because I know the county courthouse got shut down for so long. They weren't even taking mm. in mail, mm. and then it, they'd let it sit. We ran a lot of meetings online from home. That was, that was very, very difficult, yeah. especially for me. You had an <laughs> internet problem, didn't you? Yes. I remember you like having to be like, excuse me for a second. And then the call took over because yeah. I'm just, I just went off. Yeah. I went yeah. off the air. I, I remember I just, that. Yeah. I just couldn't, you know, and then I ended up going down to my basement right next to the router and running a meeting but yeah i tried doing it upstairs first floor and then the basement yeah wow. it's difficult let's hope we never have to go there again <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly and the other three packets are for the three first units going in to the l-shaped building across the street that they're currently working on so those i will also have for the next meeting and the applicants will all be in person would you like JCS also here? I hadn't even thought to ask Julie if she wanted to be here on them, but I can request it if you would like her to be. I, I don't think so. I mean, just as long as the applicant's here. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and they all know they've got to come in. Monday yeah, the just as long as they're here and we can vote on it. Yeah. 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 But I don't think yep. you have to have anybody else. Okay. Super. Yep. Makes my job easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're all about. <laughs> Well, if, if you were ever here with Mike one day, I think there were five people that walked in right behind him. Yeah. Coming in to talk to me, and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, my right, word. Right. Yeah. I think busy. Mike got out over an hour later. Yeah. <laughs> and he was there to sign. Yeah, I was just there to sign. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, if we can streamline it, Dave, that's really what I want to do. Yep. So, Absolutely. and if people, when going through these other conditional uses, if you guys have suggestions that would fall into compliance with our or our land use ordinance, I'm more than willing to listen to how you want to do them. 
because if we can streamline it because we've got another 27 potential businesses coming in over there would we be served and should we uh, develop a, a checklist just mm -hmm. so we're apples to apples every business that comes through and it, and it can be you know a, a fluid document you know because uh, like yeah. for instance with the solar issue we got smart smarter as we went along with right. that but should we have a checklist for completion and just so we have a standardized process well you have your ordinance right but what part of that ordinance won't these groups have to be with because the entire almost eight acres mm -hmm. has a conditional use and site plan approval already mm -hmm. okay so whether or not with this one being four units that are coming in out mm -hmm. of potentially I think it's six depending on what goes in the back part mm -hmm. you may want to try and do a checklist if somebody wants to start it I'll gladly add to it generate it and uh, have everybody look at it to see okay let's do this let's change this let's because if I had time to do all the checks just to we keep it fair have. and equitable for future applicants I, right. there might be value that added there I, I don't know I'm just for especially ideas. for that site yeah. yeah yeah but I do take each conditional use I take it back to the ordinance and start going down through it and you'll see that when you get my memo because all of those it's something 9A through L or A through J. I go through and I write them all in and answer them the best I can so that if you see something I didn't see, gotcha. we can change it and put it on the findings of facts accordingly. Yeah, okay. Tammy, I think that you're doing a fantastic job. Um, I mean, I'm, I've been on the planning board a long time, three town managers and three town planners, <laughs> and you're doing a fantastic job. Um, you're not missing a single beat. As a matter of fact, sometimes I'm like, really? Is she really <laughs> going to do this? But you're you're doing the right thing. Yeah. You're doing the right thing. You are definitely. So, you know, good job. Thank you, sir, very much. <laughs> so there's nothing that has to be discussed with those tonight. It's just for you to review prior to the next meeting. Yeah, it appears that 12 Sullivan is the new building across the street mm -hmm. that we just are getting the $75,000 facade in. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So uh, it looks like they have three or four tenants Potential. all ready to go in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's nice to, that's nice to see. Yeah. Really yeah. nice to see. It yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. So we have one more thing and that's to discuss the July 7th optional planning board meeting we have. Um, I'm not going to be around for that meeting. So I'm going to suggest that we don't, we skip that meeting um, unless anyone else has other ideas. But. I don't mind running that meeting, um, but, you know, I know that right now that this is, this is a pretty light, um, you know, light agenda. And I know we had a light agenda the week before or two weeks before. How are we going to look if we skip a meeting? With the applicants you have before you? Your next meeting will be big and if you find these complete when the applicants are here next week at the next meeting they won't have their public hearing and or site walk until the second meeting in July so you've got four that are going to move if they are deemed complete to the second meeting in July so right the first now meeting in July is right now I have the minutes from tonight okay and I already know that the preserve is not coming back for us anytime soon because they wanted to see if they can't get some of main DEP permits in there first before they start doing anything. Kind of like what Halflinger did, where if they have to change it, they'd rather change it before they come to you for the final application. So I know that one. And also the one lot for Double G that, you, Phil, you mentioned earlier at the meeting. Mm -hmm. They contacted me and they aren't going to come until they have final answers and they'll come as a combination because it's one lot, preliminary and final, which you can do even on a regular subdivision, but with it being one lot, I said it'll ultimately be up to the planning board if they want to approve both on the same note. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm fine with not having the meeting, the first meeting in July, um, but let's just, we got a couple weeks that we can really look and see the schedule in case something pops up 
that's major that we need to have the meeting I'm fine with well, not having the meeting that the first meeting in July and the second meeting in December in your bylaws you can take off without any recourse right then. yeah because I know last year when you said December you wanted to have the meeting and everybody here would, was able to be here I had to scurry to get a quorum that night yeah I just don't that's want so. it to be that our second meeting in July is like you know 9 30 10 o'clock at night no so. I'm I won't do that to you yep. again I can't do it to me again <laughs> okay <so>. <laughs> thank <laughs> you no <laughs> and just in the interest of expectation management those applicants that are going in across the way um, I assume by us not having that the, the complete estimated completion and occupancy date is that far enough out that we're mm -hmm. not hurting the applicants yeah. it is yeah okay. when you get my memo for the next meeting on okay. those that you were handed out tonight for you to review from where they're sitting even right now they are like 95 percent complete okay did you so. have you talked to them about or do you want to wait on the verbiage about no new business after nine have you no them? i haven't even talked to them about that yet okay so you haven't talked to mike no nope, okay not yet all right no nope. please hold something sorry yeah it was a a meeting we attended and that was on their agenda and i think it's a nice idea they, they we'll don't know what i said yeah, yeah. But we'll, <laughs> we'll discuss it at another meeting yeah okay. mike i encourage you to uh, schedule when you come in next week maybe schedule to be there for like an hour so we can like okay meet okay yeah Okay. Yeah, and we'll bounce it off you, and then we'll schedule it on the agenda. Okay. Just so you guys, you guys are a little bit in the dark. So let me just tell you what what we're thinking about doing. Um, there's some verbiage at the end of another planning board meeting that we attended that says no new business starts after 9 p.m. on the bottom of there. So it's automatically tabled until. Don't the get next excited. Time. We're going to talk to you about it. <laughs> yeah, but it just it you know, no good things happen after you know mm -hmm. two three hours of a meeting like that so yeah, yeah. And, and with as difficult as some of the applications are that are coming before you you need to have a clear head when you're looking at them to make sure you're not confusing one application like I did this week <laughs> saying <laughs> yeah Jenny had a good laugh in that one <laughs> we're good okay so yeah I just have something that does does not concern that and I do know that there's been some conversation, at least that I've heard about, on tiny homes. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, we do have guidelines for ADUs, you know, mother-in-laws and that sort of thing. Uh, tiny homes are a little bit different. So um, I think uh, I had sent an email to Tammy earlier, and uh, she had said maybe it'd be a good idea if we had a little workshop on that sure. to kind of develop some thoughts mm -hmm. about what we do before they're before us and we have no so definite it's not it's not treated I think it's a great idea but um, it's because it's listed as a code it's in the IRC and IBC books um, for 2018 um, that's what we would go by to but it's no different than like an ADU or a single family home. The only problem with um, tiny homes is we have an ordinance that says that our smallest apartment, house, whatnot, has to be 400 square feet. Right. And they find it difficult um, to meet that with a tiny home. However, it doesn't look like we're going to be changing that anytime soon. So, but if you want to have a workshop, that'd be great. So yeah, that's um, a self-resolving issue is what I'm, I'm hearing you say. It is and it isn't. So yeah. if I wanted to put, I don't know if you want to just talk about it real quick, but yeah, if sure. I wanted to put an ADU in my backyard and I was going to put up, because it can be attached or detached with ADUs. ADUs, just for people at home, is accessory dwelling unit. It's like having an apartment or... It's a um, mother-in-law. That's what it is. You used to call it a mother-in-law. Yeah, apartment. and now it's mm -hmm. accessory dwelling unit because you can rent it out to people you don't know. So that's why they changed the verbiage on that. But um, basically what it is is um, ADUs are detached or attached. They can't be more than 50% of the main living um, area of the main house on site. So if your house is 3,000 square feet, you can build a 1,500 square foot ADU. If your house is 1,500 square feet, you can build a 750 um, square foot ADU. So that's where the tiny homes kind of come into play. And I will tell you 
that there could be one, I won't give away too much, but there could be one coming into Berwick that meets the 400 square foot, barely, but it meets it. Um, they're really nice inside, um, oh, but there's some life safety issues that are also like intertwined with it. But yeah, we could have a workshop. Yeah, and there's, you know, the other issues about, you know, um, uh, water and sewer and are they going to be connected or going to have well and septic and uh, and because most of these tiny homes are mobile they're on wheels I mean uh, you know if you get a mobile home yes it comes on wheels and it has a chassis but it's there forever once they put it down most times but on uh, a tiny home they can hook that sucker up pretty quick yeah, collapse it up wheel and, and away gone. they go yeah. so uh, the connections for well and septic in most places where they're having tiny homes what we're seeing are not unique pieces of property but tiny home parks mm -hmm. and I think we have to discuss that too mm -hmm. about about parks because we have a lot of land in this town yeah. and uh, you're saying you don't want tiny home trailer parks I'm not saying I don't want it I, I may want it get, more than I want solar panels. So, but uh, but I think we ought to get our arms around it before it happens, and then we're scrambling. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it does fall under the same kind of as a single family home, though. So it would have to be all the requirements of that. Right. Um, right. So it would have to be uh, hooked up to. Which kind of excludes water. them, particularly if they're going to pull in well and septic. They need sort two of, acres. Sort of. But the, you you would be surprised on what some of these look like inside. Some of them are nicer than. Oh, they're fantastic. Our houses, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I do foresee in the next five years of somebody coming to the planning board to do that. Yeah. It's becoming a big people I are see that too. Yeah. buying RVs, selling all their stuff, traveling. That's my dream. So So if <laughs> just kidding, I'm not So could anyway. someone use a tiny home as an ADU? Yes. As long as it meets four hundred square feet. Okay. We cannot tell them no. Okay. They they would still have to meet the the ADU standards. The main property would have to meet the requirement for septic and and whatnot, correct? Or town sewer and water, yeah. A lot what of the a lot of the tiny homes get hooked up with a hose and oh. a, a extension cord. Mm -hmm. That's wow. how they run them. Yep. They're actually, I think they're really cool. So do I. Um, I think it's so cool, and if you've never been in one, I encourage you to do so. They're really neat. Mm. Yeah. But there's like all kinds of stuff. Like the loft has to be five feet any direction you pull a tape like there's there's some real like you know yeah and with well you know, of. prices skyrocketing in the real estate market mm -hmm. uh you know houses that you wouldn't even look at now are selling for four hundred thousand dollars in this town mm -hmm. so uh so i'm just you know concerned that you know at some point people are going to say for fifty thousand dollars i can buy a tiny home and put it on a piece of property in Berwick. So I just don't want it to happen uh, all of a sudden for us. Yep. Yep. How neat. Okay. That's it. Any further informational items? I have nothing. Well, you had another one. You wanted to say at the car show? Ah, yes. All those out in TV land. <laughs> uh, the. Uh, <laughs> On Sunday, between 8 and 2, there is the Berwick Car Show, sponsored by the American Legion Post 79. And uh, last year we had, I think, 168 cars, and we're probably going to get the same or more this year. It's also supposed to be a gorgeous day. Mm -hmm. So uh, there'll be music, there'll be food, and there'll be some fantastic cars. Uh, a lot of trophies, T-shirts, the whole thing. So it's a great day. Please come out. Yep. Neat. Okay. If there are no further items for consideration from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There we go. Thank you. I thought the new guy adjourned. The what?